Okay, a little bit of an update. So one or two of you, well, more than one or two, asked me about how I got the artificial horizon in the FPV um, view. And I'm going to show you what I've been doing with my Hubson. And clearly, as you can see, really, it's not a Hubson so much anymore. Let me show you around. So I'm going to tell you the bits that are Hubson to start off with because it's easier to do it like that. The motors, Hubson. The shell, Hubson. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so what have I done? I put a, I don't know if you can see down the bottom between there, probably can't so well, but I'll shift that out of the way. And down there, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it very well, but there's a power distribution board. Um, I've used the same thing, the same power distribution board on the other two quads that I've built and it's great and so I decided to stick with what I know to be honest with you I did try and do some investigating into other power distribution boards but the responses I got back trying to ask the questions weren't weren't very helpful to say the least but never mind so I'm using an F3 flight controller this thing's only got three UARTs so I'm limited to what I can have but because I've decided to go with the TBS micro receiver I only need one UART. When you use a free sky receiver, you need two UARTs because you've got smart port for telemetry and you've also got the um, S bus where this uses the crossfire protocol, which is a lot faster anyway than the smart port and then than the um, S bus. So that I can just use one UART. I've got my smart audio cable coming from my transmitter on the, another UART and I've got the connections receive and transmit for the on-screen display which is this little tiny board here. My transmitter is here. Now it looks a bit bigger than what it actually is because the transmitter is only this size but the board I've put it on, sold it onto is bigger to help dissipate some of the heat. So that's there. I've swapped out the ESCs and I've got these little tiny 20 amp ESCs. Um, calibrating them was a little bit iffy because if I use BL HeliSuite for calibration of the, my ESCs. And when you first put it on, it does a quick scan of the ESCs. I did all the updates and then I rescanned and it said I lost an ESC. I was like, oh. So I rescanned again, I lost another ESC, oh, that's not so good. Rescanned again, I gained the first one back, but lost another one. But anyway, so if you guys, you know, these little bees, if you guys do decide to put like, little bees in something, because they do fit them nice and compact, put them sideways into this sort of thing, uh, don't worry about it. And you can buy a little module, which means you can program them the, these individually, and then set them up for their speeds and everything manually which is what I've done and they work fine I've flown this thing around before you've seen it um, and it works fine now before I was using this transmitter with a built-in on-screen display but I don't like it and the reason why I don't like it is because these TBS transmitters uh, I've got the same well, I've got the HV versions. This is the 5 volt version in here. And I've got the HV version in my other two quads. But for 200 milliwatts, I get much better reception than what I did with this on 600. And this one's got a little clicky clicky for changing channels and frequencies and power on here. And of course I can access this through my transmitter and change everything in here. I can change all the settings in the transmitter. I can change all the settings on the on-screen display for what I want to see, what I don't want to see. Um, simple things like if I decide, because I can run up to 4S batteries on this now. So if I want to run, let's say, 3S battery, which unfortunately, widthways, heightways, I can fit in here. Uh, sorry, lengthways, widthways, I can fit in here. 
but it's just a bit too small for me to um, get this in. I may do be able to do a bit of modification to this and be able to get my 3S battery in here, uh, the ones that I've got already. But at, the, at this minute in time, it's just a little bit too small. But I can, if I wanted to, plug in up to 4S on here. So I decided to get rid of this. Now I was going to put in this uh, F4 board because on the initial outset of it, when I started looking on the specs of this, I thought, brilliant, five UARTs, that's great. Even though one UART is taken up by this ribbon cable connector, so you can connect it to its complementary power distribution board, it didn't matter. I wasn't going to use the power distribution board, but I'd still have four UARTs left, which would enable me to connect via a socket that I was going to fit into the shell a Bluetooth connector, which means then I could update the flight controller and all the settings via my phone or a tablet or laptop, anything with a Bluetooth connection out in there in the field whenever I wanted to, which would have been great. But the problem that I found with this was once I got, once I got it and I started looking up the tips and hints about setting it all up, this thing turns out like it's a rabid dog from San Quentin. It's got so much rules on you got to get it right to get this thing set up. I decided, ah, forget it. I'm not going to put it in an enclosed system like this where you've got 24 screws just to get inside it. So I'll use this in an open frame, um, possibly. So I thought I'd just stick with this F3 flight controller here because I know it works. It's, it, it's set up, I've tested everything. I just wanted to show you the insides. Um, but it's all set up so I can do everything I want to do with it. And so that's it. My Hubson is Hubson by Shell, Hubson by Motors, which I will end up changing because that's another thing you can do with this. I can put on some uh, 2.3k um, motors rather than these. What are they on these? These are 16, something like that. But the smaller KB, up. <laughs> I won't do that to start off with. I'll end up going back to 7-inch props to get the longer flight times um, because somebody uh, told me about some carbon props that they got 7-inch for their hubs and, and left a link. So I'll look back through my community part on my um, YouTube channel and find that link and go and purchase those. So thank you to that viewer out there for that uh, tip. And yeah, so of course I've got my camera and I've got the, the cable here which does tuck out the way of the front which means I can connect in through the remote of this. This is the Sparrow, the Runcam Sparrow. For you guys out there, if you've had any issues with it, you may find that uh, when you click on PAL, it's not really PAL, it's NTSC. And when you click on NTSC, it's not really NTSC, it's PAL. So if you do get some image issues, switch it from whichever one it's on to the other one and with me it cleared it up but apart from that that's all good yeah and that's it oh yeah and I've got uh, like I said I've got this little lightweight micro TBS low frequency receiver on um, which when you first set them up it looks like you already get eight channels so you get four channels for your control yeah four channels for the control and uh, I should do this as well shouldn't I and, uh, and then four channels for other things like arming and buzzer, which this is going to have a buzzer. I'm going to put it into the nose right on the front. It seems the most appropriate place at the minute to put it. Um, but you can actually switch these so they work as 12 channels as well, which I found out with my other model, uh, which works out pretty good. I actually found out I didn't need to buy um, another receiver, which I bought for a my GPS quad because I could have used one of these but because I wanted to return to home and all the slot on switches I found that I ran out of switches but this was in eight channel mode but then I found out through the um, settings in the Tyrannus that you can actually switch it to 12 channel mode but never mind to live and learn we all live and learn so there we go, I will get this up and flying pretty soon. Every time I've wanted to go out, we've had like lots of snow and there's no point trying to fly FPV in the snow because all it takes is one snowflake or two to get on the front of the lens and well, it can just ruin your day a little bit. 
So I thought I'd just show you that little update. I'm using a new microphone and I'm hoping it's going to sound a lot better than the old one did. Uh, or at least the, the one that's built into the phone. If you remember, you, there'd be like pops and cracks as I was making the videos. and That would be so annoying. Listening to it would be so annoying. Uh, but now this microphone should eliminate all that. Brilliant. So there you go. There's my... <coughs> There was my Hobson. It's still a Hobson though, isn't it? Sort of. Hobson by looks, but just overhauled on the inside. I don't want the GPS stuff. I don't really want that. I just want to be able to fly, you know? What I found with my Hobson was if I was up high and then I just drop it down low and try to swoop off the floor, I'd be fighting it all the time. Just fighting it. But of course with this like this, it doesn't work like that. I can have angle mode stabilised, I can have horizon mode where I can do flips and rolls but stabilised or I can just have it in full acro mode which is, if you want smooth video you're better off with acro because it, it means it's not ever trying to fight itself you know, to change itself back to level you'll just be able to leave it at whatever angle and you know you just adjust it for yourself but when you adjust it like this it just stays at that angle until you change it again it can be a bit unnerving when you're first doing it but you get used to it and it's all good so there you go little Hubson update I don't know if I can call it Hubson anymore I think I'm just going to call it a, a 501 SE yeah there you go, 501 SE. Because we've still got the shell. Still got the motors. Still there. It's just different. <laughs> Catch you in the next one, guys.